and uh, apparently he either left the country or someone, I don't know, we, we could say disappeared him. Since then, he, I mean, this is, it's gotta be like two or three months ago, no one knows where he is, even his father. been long enough uh, I kept the secret long enough and a lot of you guys were saying why is your key still on your key ring you e eagle eyes out there uh, on the ADV channel but I want to tell you the story of how I got my car back and kind of what happened now it's been a long time coming but you guys know about a year ago I bought this and uh, it was a huge project for me I mean we built it from the ground up and you know we sunk about forty five thousand dollars into this project but in the end I was promised you know a car that would do the track and do the uh, do the road. Oh, well done. Uh, 1JZ. This is from a Toyota Soar, but it's upgraded. So originally I had 280 horsepower, um, single turbo, and the VVTi, which is super, super rare. Unfortunately, because it's rare, that means I have a very rare engine in China, which is not what you want. Nope. So you got your turbo down there, eh? Yep. And uh, yeah, the whole cooling system is Samco, and yeah, the ECU has been tuned by mines. Um, to actually bring it up to about 430 legally with plates and I think uh, you guys probably remember the guy that I was I'm gonna call him Jimmy uh, Jimmy was the guy that was running the car shop that was modifying cars in Huizhou and uh, long story short I was on a trip with my wife in Dongbei and Winston was borrowing my new motorcycle which he was kind of testing out in Huizhou he ended up getting pulled over by the cops, and since it was a prototype, he um, he lost the bike to the cops, and I had to find a way to get it back when I got back. And when I got back to Huizhou, I asked a couple motorcycle groups on WeChat what my options were for getting my bike back, and they were like, you're kind of shit out of luck, dude. But uh, I eventually ended up running into some really, really high-profile, second-generation rich guys that ended up going to the DMV with me and kind of, uh, I'm not gonna say bribe, but kind of getting me getting my bike out of the whole situation. So I got the bike back and I kind of felt indebted because I, I, I was pretty sure I lost this bike that was a prototype for our company. And uh, I was also in the market for a new car. So it turns out this guy's friend opens up this car shop called ARC and uh, tells me I can get an IS. I've always wanted a Lexus Alteza because they're hard to find in America. And he can tune it for me. And that's something I was really, really into back home. I was just getting into racing before I left for China. And uh, so I jumped on the jumped on it right anyway I spent way more than uh, you know he originally quoted and he ripped he ripped me off and what happened was he kept promising that I was gonna get my registration and that's super important in China if you're if your uh, car is not registered and you get pulled over it's, it's game over you're not gonna get your car back so here I am driving a very expensive car that I put my heart and soul into with no registration anyway keeps promising and promising and promising and then he says yes okay finally I'm able to sort it out just I need to take the car so he gets it registered in his name so he can go up to Zhejiang and get it properly registered, fully modified, you know, repainted, everything all to my spec. And my car disappears and so does he, he stops answering his phone. Fast forward six months and I still don't have my car and I don't know what to do. He stops returning my calls so I freak out on him again. I'm at the, at the point where I'm like not even scared, like, I, I, it's just, these, dealing with these kind of people, like, I'm, I feel like he probably like sold my car, even though he keeps telling me it's there and he's gonna get it for me. He probably sold my car to pay off some debt. And I have no, really no recourse. I mean, I've talked to some more influential people in my life and they were like, there's nothing, nothing you can do. No one else knows where he is. All of his friends that originally like recommended him to me are all like not in good favor with him. Apparently he's taken a bunch of money from people and not paid it back. He's like way in debt and then, uh, I didn't know what to do, so I like I started asking people, and I ended up asking my father-in-law, who thought it was absolute bullshit. And what he did was, he knew his dad just from his last name, 
and he found out that his dad was actually a fairly high-level Hoijo mafia dude who uh, actually came to the tax department quite often because he owns a lot of businesses around Hoijo. So my father-in-law got, got a hold of him, and he doesn't smoke or anything, but when he met him, he came back reeking of cigarettes, so I knew he did the whole kind of cigarette drinking guanxi thing, and that's very not very much not what my father-in-law does. But anyway, a week later, I finally get a phone call from a new number, and it's, it's Jimmy. And he's like, meet me here. And that was an ADV day, so I was with Winston. So Seamilk and I are on a mission. And what are we about to do, Seamilk? Well, after much trial and tribulation, I'm not gonna wear these on camera, I'm not some sort of dork. <laughs> after much uh, trial and tribulation, and uh, many borrowed cars later, you guys have seen the car repertoire change. I had that shitty Mazda with those pink wheels. Yeah. It's been in my intro for a while. I had a uh, Sephiro, Nissan Sephiro. I had a Honda Fit. Mm -hmm. And this is all because basically I forced him to uh, lend me a car basically when he took mine back and never gave it back. So. Yeah. We talked about in that video, we said my car was basically stolen by the guy that got it. Yeah. And with much complaining and talking to his father, and my father-in-law, and a lot of uh, threatening messages and whatnot, we managed to secure the car apparently, and uh, we've received the GPS location. We're gonna take the private car there and see what we can do. So we're just luck. Yeah, you know, this guy's promised the car back to Seamook for months now. Real like, scumbag. Almost a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Almost a year he's had it. He's been giving it to other people to drive around because he owes money to lots of people so he's been using Seamook's car as collateral. So we don't know what shape it's going to be in. We don't know if it's you know, going to be running properly. We don't even know if it's there or if he's just giving us the run around. Right. So it's interesting. Come along. Let's go and see if we can rescue Seamook's car. So Seamook, are you excited? I don't know, I'm like, I don't even know what to think at this point. It's like, um, I've been waiting for so long and there's been so much shit we've had to deal with. I mean, like, with borrowing other people's cars and like, you know, losing almost 200,000 RMB on this, on this uh, vehicle that I paid for. I had the family jumping down my throat for doing this and then a lot of people like worried for me because I was dealing with shady people that I've, you know, trusted in the beginning. I mean, this is just a big lesson to any foreigners that come to China that think that you can be immersed in the culture here. You'll always be at the mercy of a Chinese person, especially if they owe someone money or if they're dealing in shadow banking or debt or gambling or something like this. You, you always get the short end of the stick, that's for sure. And there's not much recourse you can do as a foreigner because uh, legally, when you try to, try to chase down that route here in China, you, I mean, the police aren't going to help you because a lot of times these people have influence over the police, and especially in these small towns. And also, as a foreigner, nobody really takes you seriously. You'll always be kind of the bottom rung of society here. So it kind of sucks, and it's easy to get taken advantage of. Yeah, that's very true. So any kind of... Um, <clears throat> if there's ever any kind of legal dispute, or if there's any kind of, uh, you know, problem, as a foreigner, it's going to be very hard for you to, like Seamilk said, be taken seriously, and you can get taken advantage of. But, you know, seamilk has been working really hard at trying to fix this, and uh, it looks like looks like it may actually happen, so let's see what happens. Uh, we met him out near this kind of pier, uh, near the Hoijo TV station. And actually I got footage here, so I'm gonna put some overlays here. But um, met him there and he just looked super, super nervous, because me and Winston were ready to just crack him. Like, we, I was so pissed off. I didn't have my car for over half a year, and here he is, probably joyriding in it, you know, ditching people's loan repayments and stuff, and I was, I was furious. But anyway, he tries to sit in the front, and I'm like, no, you get in the back. And he, we put the camera on, and he's just like pissing himself in the back of the car, and we dropped him off at his house. I didn't do anything, but I was, I was so pissed off. But that was just stage one, because the second part of the story is I still didn't have my registration. So, I mean, again, I wait, I wait, wait, I call him, I call him, I call him, and he's not, he's not around. Like, nobody can find him. So, my father-in-law, yet again, contacts his father. His father said he can't do anything. So uh, we don't know what happened to him that day. We don't know what's happening to him now. But right now, what I wanted to update you guys on is I do have my car back. And the reason I can drive 160 kilometers an hour on the highway, or even faster, is because I'm not gonna get speeding tickets because theoretically the car is still registered to him. So if he's alive, Jimmy, here's my middle finger to you because you're gonna rack up so many tickets that you'll never be able to get a driver's license again. You'll go to jail immediately if you share your face around China. So. 
This is going to be my uh, really expensive swan song of reckless driving and having a really, really good time on Chinese highways on your bill. So I really appreciate your viewership, Lao winners, and I hope you enjoyed the story and expect to see the car in a lot more videos. Catch you later.